welcome back to Coco Wawa. It feels so strange uh, filming again after quite a long time. Um, so yeah, I'm here again just to explain a little bit about changes in uh, my life and changes in Coco Wawa. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you will like to hear a little bit more about it. If you follow me on Instagram or any social media, I think that you maybe will have seen uh, what I've been up to and some of the changes, but I wanted to do like a proper video that I can also share on uh, other social media so people can, you know, come here and just see the whole thing and all the explanations and everything. So yeah, hopefully it won't be very boring. Uh, okay, so um, first of all, we are no longer living in Amsterdam. Yeah, shocker. Uh, so maybe you don't know, um, I used to live, I'm Spanish, I lived in London for around 10 years or even a little bit more and then uh, in 2021 we moved, so last year, um, April last year, we moved from London to Amsterdam in the Netherlands and um, yeah, um, and now we just moved two months ago to Spain and to Madrid for a little bit of time. So explanations, why only a year and less than a half in Amsterdam? Um, our idea uh, after moving um, you know, from London, which was our home for so long, I mean, at that time we were not feeling like it was our city anymore, like it was so big, we were tired all the time after Brexit as well, there were so many things that we didn't agree with anymore and uh, I don't know, we were just looking for somewhere uh, smaller, uh, somewhere within Europe that we, you know, still had some sort of um, lifestyle and, you know, a little bit of excitement and in the end we, uh, my partner, husband, boyfriend and myself, we agreed to go to Amsterdam um, we decided on Amsterdam because uh, people there speak English perfectly and we were like, yes, it's gonna be fine, you know, we didn't know how long it was gonna be for, uh, but yeah, I think that we went there thinking that it was going to be more than a year and a half, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, we went there and uh, I don't have anything bad to say about the city itself, I think it was... Um, it is a beautiful city and uh, yeah, it was uh, all the green that you have uh, in the streets and around and all the water, like the canals and, and the river, it's, it, it was just beautiful, something that we really missed. Um, but there were other things that we didn't think about before going there, well, we did think about those, but we discovered them even more when we arrived there, for example, um, we knew that it was a good idea to know some Dutch, but then we realized that it was really good to know some Dutch uh, because even though people, everybody speaks English perfectly, we felt like we couldn't really feel like part of the society like we used to do in London. Uh, you know, this was such an international city, so yeah, it was very difficult to replicate that. And I, I started learning a little bit of Dutch, but then, I don't know, I had so many other things to do that in the end I didn't, you know, um, continue studying. And at the same time, my partner was working from home and we also had two lockdowns in the Netherlands. I mean, after three lockdowns in the UK during the pandemic, then we had another two lockdowns. So I think that everything was like not in our favor. We had some issues with our flat and noises. Um, and also, um, we saw how much really it rains in the Netherlands. Maybe this year has not been an example, but from I think September last year to March this year, it was like raining on a stop. And I think I got used to it a little bit more. I mean, I love autumn and I don't mind that it's cloudy sometimes, to be honest. I mean, I love when it's sunny, but I don't mind when it's cloudy and it's cozy. And I don't know, I, I really like autumn type of weather, even winter. <laughs> Mm, so I didn't mind it that much, but my partner really struggled with that and the lack of sun. Um, so yeah, I think that he was feeling very isolated and he changed, I mean he was in the same company, but he changed teams. 
and he was with a team that was not actually in the Netherlands, so he could go to the office, but nobody was there. <laughs> So yeah, it was really, really hard. So in the end, we decided that because at some point we wanted to come back to Spain to be closer to our families, but we thought it was going to be a little bit later on. Um, so then we decided, okay, let's just do it now. Um, our problem was that we didn't know exactly where to go in Spain. So <laughs> it's incredible. So as soon as you leave your country, in my case, Spain, in my husband's case is Argentina so he has even he has moved even more times than myself um, so when you leave your country honestly it's so difficult to find your way if you haven't found it on those second third countries um, fourth countries I don't know whatever um, it is so difficult to find yourself again and to feel like this is my home so yeah we didn't know where in Spain and we were sure that we didn't want to go anywhere else in Europe to start from scratch and with a new language maybe um, so yeah we we were honestly really tired and it's funny how I do feel like um, I mean I feel like I'm 12 inside but I'm turning 40 next year so it is incredible how it actually affects your stamina and your energy I mean I was like I'm not doing this again. <laughs> I don't have the energy to do this again, at least not right now. So I don't know. We just felt it was time to go back to Spain. Our families live here, so we would be closer to them. My parents, for example, they are nearing their 80s. Um, yeah, I really just wanted to be closer to them and my nieces, my nephew, my brothers, sisters-in-law, friends, you know, like in general. So we decided to go back to Spain, but as I said, our problem was that we didn't know where. And um, our idea was at the beginning from the Netherlands at some point, I start traveling to different, flying to different cities in Spain that we had in mind, okay, we might like to live here. Um, but we, as we decided to go back to Spain um, and we didn't want to do that thing of traveling all the time. I mean, environmentally, wise is not very intelligent and at the same time we thought it would be easier just being in Spain so um, then we decided to just choose a big city either Madrid or Barcelona and from there for a year maximum just to travel to those cities because it would be easier and then just choose wherever we want to settle down and just go there so that's what we have been doing uh, we decided Madrid, even though we have actually lived in Madrid and Barcelona before moving to London, because as you can see, we have lived in quite a few places. Um, we actually didn't want to live in either. <laughs> so in the end, we decided Madrid because uh, we, had, we have already family here, like my husband's sister, my brother lives here. And then my parents, my hometown is just like two hours away maximum from Madrid. So we're like, okay, let's let's go to Madrid and that's it. Because Barcelona is like, if you see, I don't know if you know the Spanish geography, but it's, you know, like a little bit more like on the side, close to the Mediterranean Sea. So we decided to come to Madrid, and even though we don't want to live here. So you're seeing me here in Madrid, but we don't really want to stay here. It's a really big city. We didn't want to, I mean, what I liked about Amsterdam, it was like, it was the perfect size. Um, after London, because London is huge, so much is way bigger than Madrid. Um, but Amsterdam is like the perfect size, so Madrid is, is, is again way too big for us again. Mm, so yeah, it's very big and I know that maybe, maybe some people are, you know, who are watching this live in Madrid, so I'm pretty sorry about this. Um, but yeah, it's quite polluted, noisy, and it was not our, it's not our goal, you know, to live here. Um, and after Amsterdam, which is so, it was so like bucolic and quiet and, I mean, depending on the areas, of course, not in the center of Amsterdam, but, um, and the green spaces and the water and everything. So it's been quite a hard change. There are many things that we are happy about. The weather is nicer. Um, don't, I don't want to start about, you know, talking about climate change, so I'm going to leave that to the side. But yeah, it's sunnier. Um, and we have 
friends here, closer family members. We have seen so many people and we are out and about. And I don't know, it feels like it's our place, right? Like we're in Spain, we speak the same language, whatever. Um, but yeah, as I said, we want to find somewhere else. So we are going to start traveling around, just honestly, it's like three places in the north of Spain because we really want to be closer to the sea the North Sea in Spain, the Mar Cantabrico, and then just live near nature, uh, in a close to a small city, but in nature and the mountains nearby, please, like green places to do, go hiking and all those sorts of things that we like. So we're gonna go explore a few places from now until um, the beginning of the summer. And then during the summer, I think that we are going to go and really, because we already, we will already know where to go, where, where we are going. So, um, so yeah, during the summer, I think we will go and just, you know, find a place like a flat or whatever, and then try to start building our dream, which is just settling down, maybe building a house. Uh, so something like that. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Another thing that happened when we moved here to Madrid and something that we didn't expect it was how incredibly difficult it was to find a flat. I mean, we have never been in this position before. We thought, okay, with our budget, it's going to be easy to find a place, blah, 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 blah. No, I mean, it's been incredibly hard. We have spent two months. We just moved to this flat a week ago. So, and we're right here on the 2nd of September. So the market is just, I mean, I, I don't even know how to describe it. I know it's like this in other, like everywhere now because of the war, because of the post pandemic, I don't know, whatever. It is incredibly expensive. Um, it was so hard to find a flat. We, at some point we were like, okay, we are leaving Madrid. We just go somewhere else. So we were desperate. So. It's been so so difficult. We have struggled so much mentally, physically. I feel so tired. I've been trying to keep on doing the things that make me, you know, feel good, like exercising. I've been exercising every day, and eating healthy. Uh, the things that I know that you know work for me: drinking water, sleeping. And, but I mean, I've been ill like three times in two months, which is not normal for me, like at all. And I feel like, yeah, my, my, my body and my brain were like shutting down. So that's why I've been a little bit less like um, willing to share things on social media or here. I also have struggled a lot with not having my stuff with me to keep on working on Coco Wawa stuff and promoting my patterns. I mean, it's been, I think this move has been the hardest. And we have moved a lot. So imagine our first year in London, we lived in six different flats because we were sharing. And it's not because we are problematic, it was because there were problems everywhere we went. So imagine, it was just unbelievably, unbelievable, unbelievably, unbelievably, well, it was really hard. Um, so yeah, I'm still here, I'm still alive. Uh, you can see something different in me that I, done this thing called balayage in my hair. I did it in April and I done it again now because I don't know, just to make it feel a little bit better. My, I, I was feeling like my hair was like like all, well, because I used to have really short hair. If you have been follow me, following me for a while, you know that I used to have a really short hair. And now it's longer and I don't know, I was like, I was not liking it much. So I was like, let's do something different to make me feel better. Anyway, so this is like the summary of what we have been through and what we are going to do next. So in the next few months, you will be seeing me on social media traveling a bit and just, you know, trying to find our place uh, where we can just, you know, settle down finally, get a dog because we really want to get a dog and, you know, just live our lives. And yeah, so that's the life, personal life. Mm, situation. I don't usually share this much, but I wanted to say a little bit more. And now I'm going to talk about Coco Wawa and changes that are coming and thoughts and things and stuff. <laughs>
thank you for still being there. Stay for the rest of the vlog. Okay, <sighs> I'm not used to speak this much on a vlog. So anyway, I mean about personal stuff, not like cocoa Wawa stuff. Now, let's talk about business. So, um, I mean, I've been struggling a lot. I've been crying a lot. I'm just how to be honest. It's been so incredibly difficult to keep on going with Coco Wawa. Uh, this year I had like good months where I was selling quite a lot of patterns. I don't know what's happened since the summer, but hello. Well, I know what's happened. The war, po post pandemic, like recession. People, of course, having to not having money to pay their bills. Why are you going to buy a pattern? How are you going to buy a pattern if you cannot even pay your bills? I mean, I get it. And at the same time, I look at me and I'm just like, please, people, buy patterns from me. It's been incredibly hard. And at some point, I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm going to do something else after all these years. Well, six years is going to be Coco Wawa sixth year anniversary next week <laughs> honestly yeah and i've cried a lot and i've been angry and i've been desperate and i didn't know what to do uh during the summer also i changed websites from wordpress to shopify which means now i have to pay of course monthly for the shopify services i thought it was gonna be like a very good decision i think it still is a good decision but i thought it was gonna there was gonna be like a jump in uh, in sales, there was not. I struggle a lot with that. Also, the move and starting in a new country. Um, I thought at the beginning that I was going to have more teaching opportunities and people here have been so helpful. I have to say, like really, really nice helping me opening, you know, their businesses um with you know for me and saying of course we want you to teach here but courses have not been going very well uh, i'm teaching on mondays children classes which those are like the normal weekly stuff um but then the uh, workshops which are the ones that really give you more money are not really happening and i understand people don't have the money or don't want to spend it in that and I'm talking about Spain, of course, this particular situation. Uh, so yeah, it's been really difficult, to be honest, very, very difficult mentally. And I've, as, as I have just said, I've been crying a lot. I don't want to just sugarcoat it. And yeah, and also social media, it's been so difficult to manage as well. I feel like nobody sees me anymore. Like no, Nobody sees my post. I said to my husband the other day, like, I feel like a ghost. Even saying it, I feel like I'm about to cry, but I do feel like nobody really sees me anymore. And I know this is just an app that is, you know, they work to, they want to make money. So they want you to pay for posts, you know, and ads and everything. And that's why. I'm not showing anymore to anybody's feeds and also I think that people are tired of social media as well and I don't spend as much time at all on social media that I used to and I know all those things but I still feel like because I don't have like a physical business like a shop in the street that I can see people and talk to them and, and see if they are passing by and entering the shop and yeah I can go to Google Analytics but you know it's not the same and social media was like this place where I could like maybe have like this community there that feeling of community and i don't feel that anymore and also because of course i left the uk where i had this really strong bond with with customers and then uh in the netherlands it still felt more like that but i don't know since i moved here and i know it's i've been struggling with lots of things and it's been just two months and blah blah but i do feel like a little bit of a ghost like writing posts and just throwing them inside a bottle and throwing them throwing that bottle in the sea and then 
hoping that someone is going to catch that bottle, open it and read what I've just said. So I cannot base my business in that. <laughs> um, so yeah, as you can see, it's like a mix of situations. It's been, it's been really hard. Um, but let's, I have this, everything like kind of written down here, like the main ideas. That's why I have this paper. So uh, let's just go, this is my situation now. So I'm really struggling with the classes. I'm still doing virtual classes, which is super nice uh, with someone in the Netherlands, someone in the UK. Um, so that's, that's good. I have my children's classes. I'm going to keep pushing the uh, workshops here in Spain. First in Madrid and then when I move to the other place, there. So I'm gonna keep doing it, but you know, I just want you to know how, you know, where I'm at at the moment regarding my mental health and, and everything with Hogo Wawa. Um, so regarding patterns, I was, this year, I have not released any new pattern. Uh, I mentioned this, I've mentioned this several times, but maybe you don't know it because, you know, Instagram, uh, social media stuff. Uh, but yeah, this year I just wanted to do like marketing, promotion uh, of all the, I think I have 14 patterns that I've released in six years, which is a lot of work, a huge amount of um, uh, time and money invested. So I, this year I just wanted to promote all the patterns and for people to find them. And some months have been really good regarding that. I was really surprised, happily surprised that, you know, it went really well, other months not so well. Okay, um, so I decided not to release any patterns. I have already two patterns drafted. I tested one already. One is a skirt, another one is a wrap dress. So I was going to release them next year and I was going to do, in 2023, I was going to do like a new size range for one of the older patterns. Honestly, just talking about it, I'm exhausted and I don't feel joy. I just don't feel the joy of releasing more dressmaking patterns at the moment. Many reasons. One, in, I need to invest quite a lot of money uh, because I need to do two size ranges, the grading, digitizing, and then of course all the work, samples, sending to testers. It's a huge amount of work. I don't think people sometimes when they ask tell me, your patterns are too expensive, I'm just like, what? You don't know the amount of work that goes behind creating a pattern. It's a huge amount of work and money. So I'm just like, no, it's not, it's not expensive. I can tell you it's actually cheap for what I, everything that I do um, myself, because it's just me. Um, so I was going to release those patterns this year, as I said, I don't feel like excitement and I was like why am I doing this I should think something else I should go another route um so I've pushed those to 2024 and as I was saying sorry I was saying that you know it's a huge investment also um I feel like things are, so, are, are already there even though I try and I think I have something I offer something different with my patterns and the designs with these two, I was like, I was looking at it, I was like, I, I said myself, another wrap dress, because that's what I, I think people is gonna say when they see the dress, they like, another wrap dress. So, I don't know, maybe if I do something different for, again, for 2023, and I don't release any dressmaking pattern, maybe for 2024, I don't know, I come up with another design or something different, and... Maybe I find the joy of doing these patterns again, mm, hopefully. The other patterns are going to be there. I will still share and promote and, you know, I, I love those patterns and uh, they are part of me. So they will still be there on the website so you can still find them. But yeah, and also there was something else that happened to me recently. You know, I was really struggling. It was one of those days that I was really like struggling with my mental health. I was, uh, we were like, you know, driving ourselves like mad, trying to find a flat. And I received a feedback regarding one of my most popular patterns. And I was not expecting it at all. It really, it was like a, knife to my heart honestly I just I started like 
crying and saying no please not today of all days when i was when i was feeling so down and i read that feedback and it was I mean, I love feedback in general because then I can get better and offer you better things, but it was not for me that day and honestly, it just, it was also one of my best-selling patterns and I was like, all these things are wrong and have been wrong for years, why people have not told me, why all these people have bought this pattern and then make it and share it and then say, wow, this is, this is, horrible and wow it really really and that day i said that's it i'm not really seeing mothers making patterns and, and just done with them um yeah i felt yeah i struggled a lot with with that and again please send feedback because i really appreciate it but specifically that day, specifically that day it was not the day for me to receive that feedback so that was really hard uh so at that point i was like i'm done so you might be thinking now, mm, what are you going to do in 2023? Are you going to just, you know, lay down on your bed and don't do or not do anything? No. So, um, I think you may know that I discovered quilting and patchwork a few years ago in London, quite a few years ago in London. I did a um, workshop. I really, really fell in love. I thought it was, I don't know, so different to dressmaking. I felt like there was no like fitting issues, maybe just the size of the quilt and I don't know, it felt it felt good, it felt good for me and right for me and right for Coco Wawa. So that's why in 2020, you know, during the pandemic, I released two quilting patterns, but at that point I didn't know as much about patchwork and quilting as much as I do now. When I was still in Amsterdam, I started reading and studying and watching videos and buying millions, well not millions, but several books and practicing and practicing and I bought a software for quilting, for creating quilting patterns. So yeah, at some point I thought, let's try this, let's, let's see how it goes. And I know it's difficult to um, open have your own space in the quilting patchwork industry, which is really, really heavily uh, based in the US. I mean, the US, I don't know, I don't think that's gonna be my market because there are so many amazing quilting designers, like modern, more like classical, like lots of them, it's just incredible. They are amazing. And the shops and everything, they're, they're incredible. And they have like so many craft fairs and stuff, anyway. Um, but I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I can open the minds of people here in Spain regarding patchwork. It doesn't need to be this classic look that a lot of people think quilting is. Um, uh, my classes are really focused now here in space on quilting and patchwork, like modern quilting. I'm gonna start creating lots of samples for classes. I have four patterns already. Uh, tested on little blocks for 2023, quilted patterns, and I don't know, I just want to give it a go next year and see, you know, what people think, how it goes, because that really excites me and makes me feel like, you know, like it's where I need to go, where my path is, and not going on to the continue the dressmaking, um, journey uh for now um so yeah i just wanted to let you know that that next year there won't be any new dressmaking cocoa patterns but there will be quilting patterns so maybe you would like to you know take a look and try it and try them and i don't know i would love to hear from you and see what you think about this little change again i will keep on if you go to my social media here whatever i will still talk about dressmaking i will be making my own clothes and i will share that and uh, but you will be seeing more of you know the quilting angle and uh, everywhere um so yeah hopefully you will like that there is something else that i want to do and that's a big investment but i have people backing me up with that which is buying a long arm 
machine. I tried it in Amsterdam um, last year, not this year for my birthday, and I absolutely loved it. And before that, in the UK, I already had a little bit of experience with long arm machines, which is which are these huge, gigantic, very expensive machines uh, to quilt your quilt. So you do the top, and then you join it with the button or wadding and the backing, and then you do the design on top of your quilt. So I might invest on that so that I can offer people um, services regarding a long arm in their machine, their quilts, and uh, maybe as well giving classes or renting out the machine so that people can come and use the machine to build their quilt, which is which I which is what I did in Amsterdam. Well, outside of Amsterdam, um, and then and then I will keep teaching and hopefully I can move more onto that field and people will be interested and maybe have more money to spend on these and patterns and I don't know um I think this has been my I think I'm usually quite an honest person and I tell things as I feel them and I'm very open with regarding my mental health I've always been I think you know that um so yeah i just wanted to be very real today and just tell you what i've been through and what i think about coco wawa now and what is coming next um so yeah um and again i will keep sharing all my stuff um personal makes and knitting and you know the usual anna stuff uh, but yeah, you will be seeing more quilting and yeah, I can't wait to, for you to, you know, tell me and if you have lasted till the end of the vlog, thank you so much because I know this was, this one was really long and yeah, tell me what you think and if you're excited or, I don't know, just let me know and thank you again for being here, for keeping, buying my patterns, for keep buying my patterns and for your messages on social media and here and everywhere um yeah thank you so much and um, yeah next video is not going to be this dramatic it's gonna be about actually the patterns of this month the uh, the ones that i've been promoting in november which are the quilts so i will be doing a video about that and i think i need to do a catch-up video about the patterns uh, in october but i will do that um this uh this month hopefully if i have the time um so yeah and then i will keep sharing all the things uh so yeah, I'm gonna just stop talking now. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think about everything. Uh, thank you and huge, huge, huge hug and lots of kisses. And thank you for watching.